Hi guys, Ted Elsner, Sacramento Historical Fencing Academy. Just a day or two ago, I put up a video about uh, the size of a system and how does it uh, kind of affect the way that we view things. If you haven't seen it already, uh, there's a link to it down in the description. Go ahead and go give it a, a, a watch. Um, while you're at it, maybe uh, hit the like button. Subscribe to us if you haven't already. Follow us on Facebook. You know the drill. But anyway, in that video, I brought up you know the size of a system and, and does it matter? And I kind of want to follow on from that today. So if you ever have hung out with me or, or heard me say it sooner or later, I'll also mention of all the other things that I talk about, that if all you have is one option, then really you don't have any options. And that's what we're going to talk about today, when one option is zero options. So what do I mean by that? Well, the first idea is this. If I only have one thing that I can ever do, then a good opponent should be able to deduce that option and therefore know how to counter it. So if we're fencing, for instance, and the only path that is open to me is to attack to, let's say, the upper left opening, right? I'm gonna strike in at it, then it makes it really easy for my opponent to defend against that if they know that that's the only place that I can attack um, to, especially if I can only attack from one given point, right? Uh, my upper right, my upper left, my lower left, my lower right, wherever. This kind of gets into a number of different issues that are involved in. The first is why we shouldn't ever just linger and rest in a guard. The second that I hang out in some kind of shoulder vomtog position, I'm really telling my opponent, hey, this is where the attack is going to come from. And regardless of what I do, if I decide to attack straight out of there, if I come from my right, if I send it around from my left, however I decide to strike out with it, the point of origin is going to be the same. So this gets into the advice that we're given to, to never lie still in a guard. Now, that is good advice, and especially you know if we're trying to overwhelm our opponent with um, you know decision-making processes, then changing it up is good. But we have to be careful if we're doing it too close and we're doing it, uh, as Meyer says, unjudiciously. We might find ourselves just giving up opportunities for our opponents to attack, uh, whether that's Nachreisen in tempo, whatever you want to consider it. But that is something that we have to watch out for. But this idea extends a lot further beyond just, um, you know, hanging out in a guard or not. It's also uh, implicit in all of the various actions that we can do, whether that's an attack or a defense, and especially in the case of a defense. So if you throw that attack at me and it's coming to my upper left opening, and I'm hanging out, let's say, up here in the Oberhut in a nice high kind of Vomtog position. I might decide to do a suppressing cut. In fact, that's, that's one of the most uh, likely outcomes, right? Because it's the quickest, easiest thing I can do striking down through that. Interestingly, when we look at Meyer, we actually see two sets of actions that, from outwards appearances, are very, very similar. Um, his suppressing, Dempfen, but also Meyer's Abschneiden, which is different than the Abschneiden in the earlier tradition, at least, um, you know, to all appearances. And they, they differ in, ultimately, the way that Meyer is cutting down, right? If I cut down with a suppressing cut, we're told explicitly that the sword should fall flat, uh, parallel to the ground, so that it strikes and forces its way down. Whereas, when I'm doing an Abschneiden, that cut should fall with as a slice, with the hands preceding the blade, okay, as they go down. Um, done quickly, the two look very, very similar. Um, and especially against an opponent that's not being super observant, they may look very, very similar. But importantly, they feel very different, and they give different effects to really the experience that the, that the opponent is going to, to have, right? If I suppress, it's more of a beat towards the ground, whereas if I do that Abschneiden, uh, it, it, done properly, it can actually end up being more of an expulsion where it'll actually create a wedge that sends my opponent's blade out to the side. And it feels very, very different. And how an opponent has to then respond uh, is different as well. They have to really rely on feeling. They can't go in with preconceived notions. So if in the first attack they did, maybe I suppress, and in the second one I then use Abschneiden, their response is going to be wrong, frankly. So that disparity 
uh, between the two types of actions we see in a number of different places. And it starts to explain, you know, why the size of Meyer system seems so very, very large, right? If I'm cutting from above to below, it's an overhaul. But if I do it with the extended blade versus the, the angled blade, suddenly it's two different actions. And suddenly we have a system that got a little bit bigger to solve problems. And so when you look at all of the rest of the actions that show up in Meyer, a lot of times you'll find ones that seem very, very similar to each other, right? Zuken and Ablaufen have a lot of similarities to them, but they are used to give different kind of responses that our opponent has to deal with. So look through your system. If you're doing Meyer, look through it. Identify the items that are intended to fill the same kind of use case scenario but give slightly different outcomes. And understand that if there's just one for that situation, it's really not very valuable, is it? Because the opponent's going to know what it is that you can do from that space. But anyway, guys, hopefully this video has helped answer some questions, maybe brought up some questions of your own. Maybe you have questions for me. As always, throw them down in the comments below. We'll respond to them as quick as we can. Uh, I'd love to get comments from you guys. It really helps me kind of understand where we're going with these videos, the channel. Um, if it helps, you know, while we're sitting here in this time of social distancing to have that interaction, um, we're there to, to assist in any way we can. But, uh, you know, stay safe, keep practicing, and we'll see you tomorrow.